Welcome to today's video and on this one this is a supplementary video on conic sections and this is how we are going to use completing the square to put our conic section in standard form and in this video I will just be going over that part of it you'll want to see my other two videos for how do we graph conic sections so I'm just gonna do a couple of examples here and we'll see what happens when we're graphing I'm sorry when we're putting them into standard form so that we can graph them that's kind of our goal is to be able to graph them so just uh, so that you remember here on the previous videos or in previous courses you learn that parabolas this is the standard form circle and ellipse and hyperbola so if you want to write these down or you have some somewhere that you have them already you'll need to know the standard form because that's what we're going to convert them into when we identify the type of conic section it is. Okay, so now let's go on to our examples. So we're going to identify the conic section and put in standard form using completing the square. And just a quick review of completing the square, we're going to take the middle term, um, the middle coefficient, and then divide that by 2, and then we're going to square that, And then we're going to add that to, to both sides. Okay, so that's how we complete the square. You should have done that in Algebra 2 or a previous course. Or if this is Algebra 2 and you're watching this, then you did it uh, earlier this year. So completing the square, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our x's and y's are together and our, and our x's are together. Anything that's not an x or a y, we're going we're gonna to put it over to the other side. All right, and we're going to do a little bit of grouping here. So we're going to go 2y squared plus 4y. We're going to leave a little space. Minus x equals 1. Okay, so let me leave a little space here for me with this negative. All right, the first thing we want to do is when we're doing the completing the square, we have to make sure that the, the coefficient of the x squared or the y squared is 1 so this is really important so in order to complete the square we need to make sure that this coefficient is 1 so I'm going to factor out a 2 so it's going to be 2 times y squared plus 2y because I factored out the 2 from the 4 and I'm going to leave a space here minus x and then I'm going to leave a big space here well since we don't have another square, we can't complete a square for x. So I'll just kind of, I'll leave it as an x here, and I'll show you what I'll do in just a second. All right, so I'm going to complete the square here. Uh, we're going to take and divide our middle term by 2. So I'm going to do my work over here in red. So I'm going to take the middle term, divide it by 2, and I get 1. Then I'm going to square 1, and that's going to give me 1. So this is the number I'm going to add in here. So plus 1. And whatever I do on this side, I have to do on the other side. So I'm going to plus 2 times 1. And the reason I did 2 times 1 is because I have this 2 outside the parentheses. Um, if I multiplied this in here, I'd have 2, and I'd be adding 2 to this side. So I, I can't just add 1 here. I need to add 2 times whatever I, I added in here. Okay? So I've completed the square, and the square is always going to be y, whatever this variable is, plus because I got a positive in the middle and it's going to be always y plus whatever you did here when you divided by 2 so y plus 1 squared and it's going to be I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and add the x over so I'm going to add the x and the reason I'm going to add the x in this case is because I know that this is going to be a parabola and the reason I know this is going to be a parabola is because it only has one square, namely the y here. If it had two squares, then it would be one of our other three choices, which, if you didn't remember, here's our three choices. So notice here the parabola only has one square. Okay, back to our problem. So then I have y, 2 times y plus 1 squared equals, looks like, x plus 3. I want to solve for x, so I'm just going to subtract the 3 over, and I'm going to have x equals 2 times y plus 1 squared 
minus three, and this is my answer. Now, the question that you might be having is, do you always solve for x? No, you don't always solve for x. In this case, when you have a parabola, you solve for the variable that does not have the square. So that way it gives us in, in ver what we call vertex form. So notice it's this one here, okay? All right, so let's look at another example. Same type of problem here, only this time we are dealing with two squareds. So I'm gonna go and factor three. The, notice here that X's are already grouped together, Y's are already grouped together, and this is already on this side. So I'm gonna go and factor out a three here, and I'm gonna get three X squared minus six X. I'm gonna leave myself a space to add something in there. Plus four times Y squared plus four Y, leave myself a space, equals negative 31. Now I do my completing the square. So take negative six, divide by two, that gives me negative three. Square that, that gives me positive nine. So the positive nine is what's gonna go right there. So I'm gonna add nine. And I'm gonna add three times nine. Okay, I'll do this one right here. So four, divided by two is two. I'll square that and I get four. So I'm gonna add four here. And I'm gonna add four times four. Remember we have to do this times this. All right, so let me simplify this out a little bit. So I'm gonna get three times x minus three squared, because I get the minus three from here, plus four times y plus two squared equals negative 31 plus 27 plus 16. And I think that equals 12. So three times x minus three squared plus four y plus two squared equals 12. Now, right away we can identify this because we can see that these numbers are different. Whenever we have these two numbers different multiplied here, this is gonna be an ellipse. And if it's an ellipse because these two are different, then we're gonna have, we're gonna wanna have a one here and we're gonna have, wanna have these under, a number underneath these in a, in a denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide we're gonna divide by 12. Okay, divide this by 12, divide this by 12, divide this by 12. And that allows us to make this one. So we got one here, and then four cancel with that three times, three with that four times, and we have x minus three squared over four plus y plus two squared over three and we've got our equation of our ellipse. Okay, I know it's taking a little bit longer. I want to do one more so we can take a look at this last one. Um, if you think you really got it, go ahead and you can pause it right now or you can stop it, but I do have this one and then a couple of practice problems if you want to try those. But I'm gonna go through this one very, very quickly. So here I'm gonna, I'm gonna again factor out my four, leave a space. Here I'm gonna factor out a negative Remember, I wanna have that to be positive, so I'm gonna factor out a negative here, and I'm gonna leave this as four. So divide this by two, we get one, and we're gonna add that, so we're gonna get four times x squared plus two x plus one, minus y squared minus four y plus four, because I divide this by two, squared it, get four. Now I'm gonna have four, I'm gonna add four times one, and I'm gonna add negative one times four, four x plus one squared minus y minus two squared equals, looks like four. So this, since I have a minus here, this is a hyperbola 
you can go back and check that. So we're going to divide by 4 because that's the number here. We want a number, we want 1 there. So that 4 is going to cancel. I'm going to give me x plus 1 squared minus y minus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. And I've got my hyperbola. Now the goal for this, the reason we're doing this is so that we can graph it. And if you watch the other videos, this is fairly easy to graph. This is not. So we're gonna, we want to change it into standard form. Okay, here are some practice problems for you to practice. If you want to uh, see the solutions to their practice problem, I, these practice problems, I will put a link or a document link down below in the comments so that you can take a look and see if you got the answers right. Thanks for joining me. Have a good, good day.